never lose anything. If you get a bad one, I've watched them take and cast whole trees of them. <laughs> they don't turn out, ah, damn, throw it back in the pot, melt it. You want to kind of open it up slowly from both sides a little bit. Then when you get down to where you're going to end, Oh, yeah. See, this is made for a stone here. Take some of this wax and bust it off here. Normally you'd use an X-Acto blade and you could just take and clean this right off. But this is stuff that the club members never see. They have no idea the potential they have to make their own mountings and even make a mounting that could become part of their history. See, and then all you do is ju you just take and trim all of this out. But here's a place for one large stone there. There's a small stone there. You see the prongs there? And you could clean those up, no problem. That's made to take one large and four small stones in there. And with a little experience, you'd have no trouble casting, cleaning that up in gold. There's your sprue for connecting for casting it. And it came right out of this. Now let's see what the other one's like. This one here, I think I'll save that one. Just clean it up. Yeah, it came out nice. Yeah. This is the one we didn't know what the heck we got. Peel back a little bit. This one's going to be a hard one. This is a tricky one. Oh, yeah, it looks pretty pincered on that bit of wax there. hand. There we got her. Yeah, see this is made really abstract where you can take and bend these around to hold a stone down in there. And it's a rough like wood, like a limb type casting. sharp blade that would be easier to clean that up but now I'm looking for a light yep light light spot right right there yeah I think that'll work I made some of them long some of them short now what I got to do is <clears throat> get wax on there. The original wax that was in there, I think I dumped it on the floor.
You have to fill it completely with wax? Or? Well, I need to get enough wax to support the ring. Since that's a little short. Get down in there. There we go. See, I have the sprue wax here. This is what goes down in there normally. Why they did this, I don't know. This is a huge hole. Because normally, yeah, the normal one, you just stick that down in there. I have a one inch one, but I don't have any one inch tubing to cast with. I just gotta make sure that I have this high enough. Up oh, too high. Yeah, that, would, that would almost have to sit down at the very bottom there. Yeah. I see most of them don't come up this high. Most of them are about half that height. I guess since it's a large hole, maybe they assume it's a large ring, so you need a long tube or something. Yeah. do it then I'll grab one of the other it's, it's a little bit taller no nope, I'll have to grab one of the other ones that looks pretty close Because you oh. want just just enough over the top of it, you said to yeah, to where you can see the top one is right there. So we've got about a quarter of an inch, a little more than a quarter of an inch, which will be just about the right height for that to oxygenate out. Okay, now set it down inside there. That's my backup.
Okay, now. Now you know you have enough. I should be close to having enough. Now I want to liquefy that into almost a paste. Do you know what vestment is actually made out of? Some kind of clay powder? Plaster. Basically all it is is plaster. Okay. What is it, calcium carbonate or something like that? Plaster. Probably. Okay, now... Okay, we got that. Normally, if you had a chance, you had a vibrating table as your best bet, but see those little bubbles coming up in there? Yeah. Mainly what we want to do is keep it away from the wax as we can. What some of them do is they would take and make a medium solution, just a little bit thinner than what we had there and they would dip the ring or the object in it two or three times and kind of coat it. Okay. And yeah. then put the shell on and then go ahead and unpour the investment in. So that way the bubbles would be separated. Yeah. Enough. yeah. There's also a liquid that you can get. I haven't found it yet, but there's a uh, liquid spray you can get, which was, they call it like a super wetting agent. Mm. And you put it on there and it'll make the vestment stick to it quicker and less of the bubbles. I'm probably safe down in there, but I just, I like getting as many bubbles as possible out because sometimes they're annoying when you're trying to finish the ring in a bad spot or if you get one caught like on this one here where you got the little prongs, you get one caught on the dang prong. Oh, uh, yeah, then it's just a solid mess. Yeah. It's a monster to get rid of. We're also settling the... Now, another thing, if you consider what I'm doing, it's going to settle the plaster down more and less concentrated towards the top end. So when you do that, then it's going to be thinner here than it is down here. This will hold a solid form. Mm -hmm. And this will become a little bit more porous. Being porous, it'll allow us to suck the air out of there when we pull the silver down in. That ring there, I'm going to cut this off right here. This should do it. The ideal thing about this, you can see I've got a lot of little specks of silver in there, but the reason we put that powder in there, the boric acid, is it helps line that in there. So mm. when we want to take this out, if we keep it hot, it can be a, like that one piece I had there, a little knob that you can pry it loose. So, now comes the fun. We want to make a button that would fit in the cavity. And this whole procedure is called the lost wax process. So slowly starting to melt and ball up. This is pure silver? Pretty darn darn close to it. That has a melting temperature of above 2000? 1900. 
negara batu. There we go, it's loose. What's burning is the wax on here. Now we got our slug. That's a big piece of silver. You see the greenish tint to it there? Yep. That's the borax flex mm -hmm. and all that was in that cup and now I like to see that coating there so that when we go and this comes out hot and we melt it, that will help us roll again. Get that. Mm. Now once it's melted into a ball and rolling, that's when we pull this and pull the vacuum. Ah! Wonder how close. Probably been about 15 minutes. There we go. Okay. That little spot down there is where the... Now, what one can do is they can take the knife and carve out around there. But sometimes that's not the smartest thing to do. The reason being if the hole is too big and you got the ring right underneath of it, right like what we do, before the gold gets completely melted and rolling, it goes in there and gets too cold too fast. Mm -hmm. With this, I can take and wipe this all off. Okay. This goes. In here, inside, about the center as we can get it. Close this up. I'm going to turn it on low, like this, for about 15 minutes. So at 245, we will turn it on full high. This will help let a little bit of the wax melt out and hopefully get some of that moisture out of there. Once it gets there, and we can turn it up, and as soon as it glows that right shade of red, we can take it out and cast it. And then when it casts... When you take you take it out, and then you put the gold button on, and then, you, button on then there, you blowtorch it again? Blowtorch it again until it's rolling, rolling, and rolling. Then I take, and as soon as it's rolling, it helps when there's two people. I'll hold on to the frame while I'm torching, and then when it's rolling, the other person reaches over and pulls that lever out, which forms the vacuum, sucking the silver down in. Do you go fast on the pull or? Uh, fairly, uh, as fast as it'll let you, because don't forget. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you couldn't really pull it when your hand was in the way. Yeah. Could be redder, but that's pretty red.
Keep that. Yeah. Oh, that was it? Now, as soon as that gets hard there, then we'll give it a bath and see what but happens. Is it pulled out enough? Or do you think? It ain't going nowhere. But we had twice that size of a bubble. That's true. Yeah, there was a lot more in there. And I guess I was just expecting to have to pull it out like all the way, but sometimes I guess it won't go. It'll go as far as so when much. that air is out of that. Yeah. Uh, Channel. Up, 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 up. Okay, now. A couple more minutes and we dunk it. And the hole. Because it's still a little bit red there on the inside edge. So you gotta wait till it frosts over and then cools down just enough. Uh, if, if I don't wait long enough and it's still molten inside, then yeah, it would It'll just kind of, it might go to pieces, kind of bubble to pieces when we're going there. Okay, you ready? Yep. Yeah, that was a big old hunk of silver that plopped out. I hope he didn't leave it in there long enough. Oop. I had it there for a second. Oh, we got it! There it is. We got the ring. And nice shining silver. And remember I told you about bubbles? There's a bubble right there. Yep. We got it in all, most of the, oh, we missed a couple of details over here, I think is all. This one here a that little wrapped bit of a, Yeah, a little bit of a prong there. Yeah. I should have probably had it get, leave it in the oven for about another 30 minutes. And then when we did it, but still, we have a ring. Yeah. And all we have to do is cut it off down here. But you see how it works. Yep. Yeah, we lost a little bit of detail off of this one and off of this one. You could still put a stone in there using these three, four prongs. You could still mount a stone in there. And if you had to, you could build this one here up a little bit. It's not a loss. Oh, look at that. Clean. More notches out. This was a weird ring anyway. Yeah, I wonder what stone would look good in there. A blue stone, I bet. 